Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Long Live Rock and Roll podcast. As usual, on the screen opposite me is my good friend, Mr. Philippe Amorim. How are you doing, man? Hey, man. How are you doing? How's everyone? Good, good, good. Yeah, all good here. Thank you. Um, nice Saturday morning. Um, got, the, yeah. got the sun shining here. What about you? Where, where are you today? Um, I'm in Wimbledon, my family's place today. Um, what are you drinking? And uh, Well, it's not beer again. See, I've, I've, <laughs> I've been like, it, that's not really rock and roll, but I'm drinking coffee today. You've been in Spain for like 10 days, <laughs> drinking beer every day. So this is the detox, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So cheers. Cheers. Yeah, let's get the episode started. Um, Felipe chose, he called me up last night and we were going to do an album, but then he had this idea. He said, you know what? We haven't done like a discussion episode in a while. So um, he said, how about this? Because he's been listening to some albums and we thought, how about we do an episode about old bands who are still releasing and producing new music. Do you want to add anything to that, Felipe, or did I get it right? Yeah, well, that's it. That's exactly what it is. I mean, um, basically, um, the dinosaurs are still around, isn't it? And it, it, <laughs> At least in the rock and roll world. Isn't it? They're still there. They're still doing stuff. Yeah, they're not extinct and, yet. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell you this. like My, my first um, live music experience, believe me or not, the first time I've been to a gig was Deep Purple. Okay. 1999 in Brazil. Uh, so great way to to start my my gig life, isn't it? The first gig I've ever been to, one of my favorite bands. And at the time, the press in Brazil was saying, you know, the the the, the English rock and roll dinosaurs are coming to Brazil, kind of the, like dinosaurs. Come on, how old were they at the time? 1999. So that, I mean, only about 20 years after their first album, isn't it? Exactly. Well, wow. a bit more, isn't it? Well, 70, yeah, kind of almost almost maybe 25 years or something. I don't know. Yeah. But still, uh, in the rock and roll world, sometimes the, if the band is 10 years old, that's too much. It's so, like, you know, you're old. You, and, it's, uh, and everyone was calling them old, you know, so these old guys coming here playing music. And they were probably about uh, 50 years old, which honestly... In, the, in this day and age, you can be um, you can be very healthy at that age, and you can be very, very productive. And it's and very how was the show? Like, the show was fucking brilliant. I mean, yeah. those guys they 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 and they keep improving. I saw them live a few other times, and the older they got, the better they were sounding, in my opinion. So it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think that is something that could definitely happen with live music. I think that when you have bands who just keep I mean, songwriting is something we'll obviously talk about a lot in this episode, but if in terms of live performance, maybe it's worth sort of talking about that for a bit, is that yeah. how can practicing that much ever be bad for you? You know, when you're on tour, you do two things. You practice the songs and you play the songs, as you know, as you and me very well know. And it's like, you know, what you do is certainly if you're playing the same songs every night with, with the same artist or the same band, then what ends up doing is you end up practicing parts. So, so if you're doing a song and you're doing a guitar solo, I think a guitar solo is like the easiest, the most obvious one to sort of pick out. But if you're doing a guitar solo, you've got a set solo maybe for one song. And when you're practicing it in the sound check, you maybe try some different thought bits. You try a new technique. You try some tapping or you do this and that. And then come showtime, you think, do you know what? I'm not confident enough to do it tonight. Let's give it a couple of goes of this normal solo. And maybe on night three, we'll do it. Night three comes along and you stick in the tapping or the special kind of guitar skill. And then that that's that's like a way of practicing, isn't it? And so to it do is that, practice, yeah. For year after year, show after show, tour after tour, it, it's no, it's no wonder that bands like you said, like Deep Purple, just keep writing, keep playing, keep performing, get better. Yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just going to quote uh, Ian Pace on that because someone asked him if, if it was, uh, if he ever got tired of playing Smoke on the Water, and he said, "Well, um, I never played that song in the same way, like, yeah, you know, I, it's, it's, it, he's always improvising, he's always creating on top of it, and I think uh, you, you." You get so used to the structure of the songs and and the melodies and the lyrics and and everything. You know where you are. The song, like it, it's just like, um, it's like as natural as as you know driving a car or it's it's just something you do. You go and do it. Yeah. So so I think yeah I think definitely the live performance element gets better. Um, uh, unless people are not, some musicians have been criticized by not sounding that good live because you know maybe, uh, maybe they didn't 
stay in, in shape in terms of their practice when they're not touring and then uh, maybe when they get old it's not even the age that that that, that makes a difference it's the fact that they, they they became a bit lazy or a bit too comfortable you know and then they just don't don't practice anymore or whatever but uh usually as a band uh it, it tends to improve doesn't it i mean if you, if you tour with the same lineup and you play every night and you and you know, you go on to and it just sound really tight. So I think in terms of live performance, um it's I'm very satisfied with all the, the old guys who are still around. I don't I don't think there's any band that I see playing and think, oh, these guys, you know, they should have retired long ago. I'm I'm really happy just because I'm a classic rock fan. So all the guys I listen to, um but they they, they were around in the 70s. So I'm glad they're still out there performing to start with. I think that's the main thing for me. I'm really glad that those people still bother leaving their homes and, and getting on the road to, to deliver some music for us. So, yeah. That's the thing, like you said, it's about delivering music for the fans. And, you know, when I, I saw Iron Maiden um, back in 2008 uh, with their, what was it called? It was the Somewhere Back in Time tour. And they were playing all the music. So that they went on this famous tour um, that is famous for being on the Live After Death live album. Um, and that was the tour they did after the Power Slave album came out. And it was a set of 17 songs. And then in 2008, they played it again. But the same 17 songs. And I don't think there was any new ones added. So that was like a throwback for the fans to the classic Iron Maiden that they were playing. Because, you know, just like any live band, you release an album, you play a set list full of songs from the new album, Album, and then a couple of classics before and after the new songs, for example. But Iron Maiden did this to give the fans something they wanted. And they've done this a few, they, they've done this recently as well, called uh, Legacy of the Beast Tour. The same thing, they're playing, they, they, they looked at a tour they did in uh, the late 80s and they took the same set list and they're playing it again now. And I think keeping fans happy is a big part of what these dinosaurs are doing now, you know, isn't it? It is, it is. And I, 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 I want to, um, ask you this question what do you think is their main motivation is it i mean not iron maiden uh but you know any of those bands who are still out there is it the love of making art or, or producing music or performing music is it the money or is it a mix of both what do you think um that's a hard one because I think that you're going to get different rewards from different things. I mean, when you're in the studio songwriting, um, you know, we both know that there, there can be certain moments when you're getting to record an album where things just click and a certain thing happens, you record a certain drum part and then we all go, oh yeah, fuck yeah, that was great. And then that intensity and the level of... Um, the level of spontaneous quality that we've just found can then be emulated because the rest of the band get excited and they're like, yeah, fuck yeah, you know, let's make this song even better than we thought it was going to be. So I think there's the reward for that. There's the creative reward in, in, in the sense of you thinking that actually we're, we're still doing this to the level, to the, we're still making music that is getting us excited about our own music. And at the same time, Who's going to turn down money for the sake of it? You know, who's it, well, exactly? <laughs> yeah, I think when when yeah, go uh, for it. When, when Cream got together again, we did the reunion gig or gigs. I don't know if it was just one. They actually released as a DVD. Um, I think well, Clapton was in a really uh, good financial position in life. Let's put it like that. And but I think Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce kind of needed the, the, the money. But um, I think Clapton said um, that even for him, it was a lot of money. Really? You know, it, it, so so it was worth doing it to have the extra cash. Because what, what we don't realize is like, obviously not all of the bands we like, uh, you know, not all of them are millionaires. No, Some yeah. of them were millionaires, they're not anymore. Some of them maybe have never been millionaires or are not that well off uh, uh, to, to, to the point that we you think they they don't need to work you know like uh so also even the guys who have loads of money i believe um you just suspend according to how much you earn isn't it yeah i mean it's like so, sometimes you see a middle class person who's got as much money to spare as a poor person yeah. because you keep that middle class lifestyle so you just keep spending so Good some point. of those guys you know um 
for for many reasons they spend a lot of money and uh, you you can earn millions and still be in debt so i believe some of them are touring because you know it's a job i got to do my job but i think as a musician we can clearly say that this uh, i think we can uh, we have the experience to say the music more than a job is an addiction isn't it it's like yeah yeah especially <laughs> to to be part of a creative process that that le- that um delivers results for so many people i mean he, for the last few years myself and felipe have uh, we were playing for for a, uh, an artist called jack j hutchinson and when we would go to the gig so the, for, for for those who don't know who haven't followed mine and felipe's uh career in quotation marks um we you know we, we were playing for him for a certain amount of time and then on this last album we were both producers of this album and i had a songwriting credit on one of them me and felipe had a songwriting credit on another tune um and when you go to the gigs when, when we end up going pl- to playing these songs to the gigs and the audiences there is a certain sense of pride when uh, a certain fan uh, comes up to us at the end and says guys that was even better than the last show which he came to yesterday um, <laughs> you know who i'm talking about don't you yeah, shout, exactly. out, shout out to mr pete hearn absolute legend um yeah <laughs> fantastic guy um but seriously he would come and he would say and not just him others as well would all come and say guys that that was incredible and i see your producer you know you're doing produ- production on the new album thank you this these songs sound wicked you know and we said well listen we didn't write all of them we we hardly even wrote most of them but to feel that we have had an impact on a piece of art that has touched and brought joy to so many people is addicting isn't it yeah yeah it is and and i think it's it's kind of uh, if someone says that the you know the gig sounded good and then it's like okay can I top that? Yes, yeah. exactly. So, and then you feel challenged, like, oh, you know, can can we do it again tomorrow, but slightly better? Is it? Is, this is, this do, is do, do, yeah. So I was just saying, yeah, so, so, saying yeah. go on, no, go on, please go. No, no, it's just like dude, maybe maybe the, the Rolling Stones are thinking, can we play Satisfaction better than last time? Yeah. <laughs> can we play it better than fifty years ago? Um, yeah. <laughs> imagine they said that every night. I mean, how how much better have they gotten? <laughs> I, th- I think they did. Again, I saw them in 2006, um, Copacabana Beach in Brazil. Um, about 2 million people in the audience, like wow. uh, I think is a, is a world record. And they were really good as a live act. Yeah. So that, that's, and I saw them again in Hyde Park recently. Well, in my humble opinion, they were better. Really? So so here's the thing. I think, um, so we're talking about uh, the, the live performance element of it. And I think we, we, we could kind of agree that if, if the bands, they work hard enough on it, they can sound better uh, as they get older. I think that is yeah. that is that is it's possible, right? I think so, if you give if you give the time, the dedication, and the effort towards it, I mean, it's definitely possible. I mean, I, I watched a movie yesterday night. Um, we had a friend yeah. over, so me and my wife with our friend watched The Dirt, which is the Netflix. Have you seen it? Oh, it's, it's the um, Motley Crue one. That's the one. Yeah, <laughs> it's oh. called The Dirt, and it's on Netflix. Outrageous. <laughs> It is a crazy film. I mean, I, you you do wonder, you know, how much have they um, slightly over exaggerated certain elements just to make it look more rock and roll. But I have no doubt that you know, in general, that is the way the lifestyle was for them. Um, yeah. And you think when you when you start abusing your body to the level that they were in terms of the heroin and the alcohol, that's when I think the liveness of a band can suffer because yeah. you're not doing yourself any favors you're not looking after your body um but when when a band can commit and dedicate and put the time and effort and even not just putting the time and effort in but wanting to put the time and effort in wanting the band to sound tighter just going back to what so to you and me playing with jack uh, we we do nights where we would um you know, we, we'd come off stage having played a fantastic show and then, but me and Felipe would go and we'd talk and we'd say, listen, do you know that section in this song? You know, when you go into the next part, maybe push it, maybe you hit a cymbal and we push into the beat and that's going to give it a nice driving sound. So even though we've played these fantastic shows, you know, in our, in our opinion, um, we, we still think, how can we make this better? And that was, over, we've done that over the course of what, four years? And I think the songs have gone from, I don't know, let's call it a level eight to a level nine because of that 
imagine well, and, and you try band. stuff you know yeah. say again yeah no you try stuff if it doesn't work don't yes. do it again if it works you do it again simple but and now imagine that that trial and error with a band is now lasting 50 years that yeah. they must get to such a level i mean you know like i said about iron maiden that they they headline download this year 2022 they started in 1975, so 75, 85, 95, 1000, 5, 15, 20, almost 45 years, uh, almost almost 50 years that they've been with playing live. Line with lineup changes, isn't it? I, with some lineup change, changes. Yes, but, uh, but not crazy lineup changes. Not crazy. No, not at all. At all. Yeah, I think yeah, that, that their final form was set in like 1990. Bruce Dickinson wow. left for a bit and Blaze Bailey came in and then they switched back in the early 2000s. But overall, they have had this solid lineup for a good yeah. few decades, I reckon. Yeah, so that seems just like in some cases, the lineup change can be um, kind of refreshing for the band. I'll, I, I, well, I've mentioned Deep Purple before. I'm going to talk about them again, which is when Steve Morse joined the band, or well, he sadly had to leave now because, you know, personal issues, family issues. But... Um, he, when he joined the band, he he brought this new blood. First, is is younger than the other guys, and is from a different country, different culture, different background. He plays guitar in a very different style than than Richie Blackmore used to play. So, it's it it tur- he turned them into a different band, and brought a new kind of um, a whole new uh, uh, group of fans, you know, to their fan base. People who have, you know, uh, uh, already fans of Steve Morse started listening to Deep Purple and stuff like that. So uh, sometimes you have that, you know, that lineup change that brings something to the band. Uh, like Pink Floyd, when Roger Waters left and Gilmore decided to carry on being the lead singer, it's a different band. Yeah. You know, some people don't like it. I, I personally think there's really, really cool stuff uh, that, that Pink Floyd had, had produced. Um, after Roger Waters, it's just it just takes too long for them to do stuff, isn't it? They don't seem very motivated. Maybe you know because maybe they don't have the financial motivation to do stuff. But um, in terms of um, uh, um, live performances, I think uh, even even when you change someone in the band, then you feel like challenged to um, sound better than the previous incarnation of the band. And I think it's it's for me it's it's clear that it's worth going on tour regardless of your age or regardless of for how long the band's been around as long as the band can still deliver if it's like as good as it was or slightly better or slightly worse i mean it's acceptable isn't it yeah. if you want to go and see your heroes on stage i think that they are things change a lot when you're talking about recording a new album mm. And then when you're talking about an old band trying to come up with new material do you know what i think sometimes those guys go in the studio and think, yeah, let's just record something. And um, they don't have maybe the, the same energy or motivation. Because imagine you, you know, you're 20 something, you've got loads of ideas. Everything in life is new, you know, relationships and 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 arguments and and whatever, all sorts of personal experiences. You have that sort of stuff to put into your music. And uh, assuming you you kind of slowed down a little bit with age, uh, maybe you're going to have less um, life experiences or different life experiences to to put into your music. So it might be harder to write songs, you know. Um, excuse me. <coughs> uh, so I imagine it's um, it can be harder to, 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 to create something. But I imagine if you get into a studio and if there's a record label, there's money into it, and you're about to release a new album and everyone is, is waiting for it. And you do the first song, you think, this is not good. You just have to carry on anyway, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you got to finish it. I mean, so you, how many albums have been finished under those conditions in it? That's a good point, yeah. I mean, have you you've heard of um, you've, have you heard of the uh, MMA fighter called Conor McGregor? Yes. Everyone's heard yes. of Conor McGregor. There's, yeah. there's, there's this thing going around um, recently where... So he, he he at one point he was probably considered one of the best mixed martial artists on the planet, um, and then he because of that because of some of his results from fights he accrued a lot of money, um, and his last few mixed martial arts fights he's lost and quite convincingly, 
But the, the, the idea is that the talent is still there, but I can't remember the phrase. It's um, h- how do you go and train when you wake up in silk sheets? <laughs> because how do you, how do you build how do you build your motivation to the point where well, actually do you know what he doesn't need to win this world title because he was already the champion before he doesn't need a huge payday because he's a millionaire already how do you wake up at 7 a.m to go for that run and to get to the gym an hour later when you're in your huge house with your silk sheets, everything you want is around you. And that's that might be the same, I think, as what you're saying with the well, band. It, like, you know, it, the, yeah, go on. That was the same thing with like James Hunt in Formula One, isn't it? He he he, he managed to to win one championship in nineteen seventy six. And uh, and then he was like, Yeah, I'm just gonna have fun. Yeah, and I've done never, it. exactly i've done it i never think, won again but, he, but still doing it because he was still doing it to you know a certain age because it was like oh, it's, it's the job isn't it you got to do your yeah. job but yeah but it's i think some people kind of still manage to to um challenge themselves and and and, and keep trying to improve but i think it's different with athletes uh, is is that they um The, you know that they're going to start struggling like a lot with age, whilst yeah. musicians not necessarily. That is that is the main thing. Like physically, there's only so much you can deliver as an athlete, whilst so let, as a musician. Let me, you, let me ask you: What about mentally? What about the amount of ideas? Take a band. Like, I mean, okay, choose any of those bands we're talking about. How do you keep churning out new ideas and fresh ideas? Or if they're not new and fresh, how do you keep repeating formulas that you've been doing for the last 30, 40, 50 years? That's a good point. Yeah. Maybe I was, just, I was just, just gonna get... Follow, I was just going to follow up your point and ask you, after we spoke about uh, McGregor and Hunt, um, that may, maybe... You, so you said about Hunt. He won his Formula 1, he won his uh, championship, and now he, he kept doing it because he loved what he did. Do you think there is an element with some of these bands that they are trying to sort of relive the glory days? They're trying to recreate what it was like writing an album in the 70s or whatever. I think it's funny because somehow, as we said, you can kind of recreate that atmosphere on stage, but in studio is not the same thing, isn't it? I mean, the technology changes and then sometimes you have a different producer. Remember like, Especially, you know, the classic rock guys, they used to get into a studio and, and, and play live. Just play. And yeah. it's like, and record live. Whilst, you know, nowadays, um, most record labels would uh, um, get them a producer who's not going to allow them to work like that. They're going to just do one instrument at a time. So technology changes. The environment in the studio is not the same as it was like 30 20 years ago, maybe. So um, it, it's just, I, I think if they try to recreate, it's it's really, I, th- I don't know, I think that's a recipe for disaster. M- most of the times, if you really try to just recreate what the band was uh, 30 years ago, whatever, what do you think? Like, what do you think about the new Iron Maiden album? Because you know the album really well. And it's, and yeah. it, is it that just like trying to sound like old Iron Maiden? Or do you think it's actually new and there's new elements to it? The problem is, is that Iron Maiden have never stopped sounding like Iron Maiden, old and new. So we're in this situation where it's really tough because Iron Maiden. From the mid from two thousands onward, they've had loads of hits and misses with albums. And uh, but but the, the thing is, is that they have all sounded like Iron Maiden. So you can't ever say to them, "Oh, this album sounded too proggy," or "This one was too light and too poppy." It's all Iron Maiden. But it's just it's almost like I can't describe it. it, it it's like that some of those albums have that final extra ten percent that made it what it is and the others just lack it a little bit it falls a little bit short of so of the, of the iron maiden albums 2001 brave new world so iron maiden started in 1975 so that's 75 uh, 80 90 zero um so that's 30 years or 20 25 years 2001 they had brave new world which was a stunning album 2007, i really like that one yeah 2000 uh 2006 was one called 
is it Dance of Death? Or I don't know about the year, but Dance of Death. That was okay. Um, A Matter of Life and Death came after that, and that was okay. Then after that came The Final Frontier, which was just a stunning album. Critics loved it. I loved it. Maiden fans loved it. And it was just full of such a fantastic array of songs. Some really long, others short and sweet. And it was just fantastic Iron Maiden. And we thought, fuck yeah, this is what Iron Maiden is from now on. Give us more of it. Then six years later, the Book of Souls came. And it was kind of like, it was like, wow, there's there's some good songs. But it doesn't doesn't hit the same way the Final Frontier did. And Senjutsu, the new one, 2021. Same thing, really. It was like, yeah, there's some some good moments here. There's some good songs. Um, But ultimately, nothing new. But then again, as I just said, what when have Maiden ever done anything new? It's always been yeah. That's found. That, that's interesting, really, because they for them it wasn't um, a difficult task to stick to the formula because that's 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 what they are, and they didn't try to look. Let's do something completely different. Let's shock the world doing like a you know prog rock album or or jazz influenced metal yeah. whatever there was like no no that this is iron maiden we're going to sound like that just so yeah. you know guys this is actually i mean you're going to see it in the title but this is going to be part one of this discussion we're going to have another episode coming in two weeks which will finish off this discussion um i just want to finish off this episode with yeah. a segment we're going to finish off with laz unleashed This is my Laz Unleashed to Iron Maiden. If you're listening, <laughs> a big if. Um, Iron Maiden songs, for me, they're very long now. The Final Frontier had a nice variety, a couple of four-minute songs, a five-minute song here, but then you had quite a few six, seven, eight, nine-minute songs. The Book of Souls was a very long album. Most of the songs, I think, sat at seven-plus minutes, and the new one as well, Sunjutsu. Um I think they're too long now. I think we've, we, and this is this is my guess as a fan. I still need to make it clear. And this is my little disclaimer: I love Iron Maiden, one of my favourite bands. But I think that there was a point where they might have run out of riffs and ideas and what to do because in the last album, Sinjutsu, one of the songs had a few little guitar melodies that I'd heard from previous albums, but with one note changed, you know, or rhythm slightly changed. And so we know. Iron Maiden, we know that you can write these songs that are long, take you on this journey, full of riffs, full of solos and all this stuff. What I'd like is I'd love Iron Maiden to do something new. And I say new, but what I mean is this. Everyone go and check out, as usual, I don't know actually how many songs we're going to have in because we're not really talking about a band or an album, but as usual, the playlist will be in the bottom of the show notes. Um, I'm going to put in Can I Play With Madness, which is an Iron Maiden hit from the Seventh Son of a Seventh Son album, uh, 1988, I think that was. Can I Play With Madness is a short three-minute song that has that, that, that just completely embodies everything Iron Maiden is about. It is fantastic. It's got a great solo. Bruce's Dickin, uh, Bruce Dickinson's uh, fantastic vocals, a really awesome sing-along chorus. Three and a half minutes long. I'd love Iron Maiden to do an album full of three minute songs just to try. It's like, come on, the last five albums you've done, they've all been really long. They've all been epic, you know, epics in terms of length. They're good, but I'd love, I'd love for, for me as a Maiden fan, it's all getting a bit similar now. And when I talk to other Iron Maiden fans, they're either not interested, they don't care for the new album, or it's like, well, yeah, it's fine, but. I think it should email Bruce. Say, like, should I send him the segment? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Send him. Yeah. Send him the the, the podcast <laughs> link. So like, listen to this whole episode at the end. There's a mention. Uh, yeah. If, if know, I email this, you, to, so. if I email this to you, Bruce, if you're listening, um, I'm a I'm a huge fan. Thank you for everything you've done. You've emboldened. You've enriched my life with music. But I just love to hear something different. But yeah. Anyway, yeah, guys, and, thank, and it's going to be an album for you specifically. So they should record something dedicated to you and with you on the album cover with uh, what's his name, Eddie. Eddie, so Eddie is, is that yeah. too much to ask? And, yeah, imagine you and Eddie uh, uh, on a kind of MMA fight, like you know. <laughs> 
Yeah, playing a rugby. In the ring. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be great. Yeah. Anyway, guys, right, this is going to bring the end uh, to this episode, which is, again, the first part of the two um, episodes on this When Dinosaurs Ruled the World uh, special, which Felipe <laughs> came up with that name, which is incredible. Um, in the next episode, which is going to be released two weeks from now, we're actually going to go into a bit of a discussion about some albums um, in specific and talk about some bands, what they've released, how it compares... Did it? Was it a hit? Was it a miss? Do they sound like themselves? Do they sound like the old themselves? Um, so please join us in two weeks uh, for the next part of this discussion. As usual, you can find us on socials and uh, Google and the internet. Um, so please feel free to join us. And keep on rocking, everyone. And as usual, long live rock and roll. <laughs>